Hello everyone, Tutu Mora here with The Why, bringing you tools to feel well in your body, mind, and spirit. So today we're going to be doing a full Pilates class, putting together many of the elements that we've been doing small videos, more in-depth videos on. We're putting all of those elements together here for a full class. So as always, this is just an invitation to move, to see what feels good in your body today and to work with kind of where you're at. So what's accessible in terms of range of motion and strength for you today. Now, if you find um, over the course of this video that there's something that you would like to kind of concentrate on and work more on a little bit um, more in detail, then you can find one of those shorter videos that we've focused on a particular movement or a particular stretch and you can practice that before returning back to the full class. So all you're gonna need today is a yoga block or a firm pillow if you don't have a yoga block at home, as well as a TheraBand. Any color of TheraBand is fine as you can kind of modify the resistance by bringing your hands further apart or closer together. So mine is just kind of a maroon band here and it's not the the closed loop kind if you don't have a theraband at home that's okay you can easily use an extra pair of yoga pants anything that's a little stretchy that's going to provide you a little resistance so just having those items handy with you as well as a yoga mat to move around on we're going to start standing up so wherever you are making sure you have enough room to move your arms around Let's just bring the feet hip distance apart as parallel as possible. We're going to start by taking a roll down as a way to just see how the spine is moving, how mobile you feel. And we can return to this movement at the end just to see how um, movement has made a difference in our overall uh, range of motion. So let's just start to tuck the chin articulating down, keeping a gentle bend in the knees, and of course stopping wherever you feel any tension or tightness. If you make it all the way down to your feet, that's great, and if not, that's okay too. Just start to find where your range of motion is here, where you might be holding on to tension in your body. Let's take that one more time. Just starting to tuck the chin and articulating down. Again, stopping where you feel any tension or tightness, just keeping it easy and gentle. Little warm up here. All the way back up. All right. So we're gonna head down to the mat. Go ahead and bring your props with you. And just finding a comfortable position laying down. Feet planted, hip distance apart. All right. So taking a couple deep breaths here, we're going to start by taking some pelvic curls. So just beginning to tilt that pelvis, curling that tailbone as if it's just going to slide towards the back of your knees and then resting everything back down. So finding that curl and resting back down. We're just gonna take a few more here at your own pace, finding that warm up for the lower lumbar spine. Noticing, noticing where it feels a little bit creaky or a little bit tight. One more. And then we'll return to our neutral pelvis and start to take a knee sway. So leaving the feet and knees where they are, we're going to sink into one side of the pelvis, letting those knees and feet follow, but allowing the upper body to stay where it is. And taking that to the other side, feeling for where your range of motion is at this moment and just honoring that. Couple more sets, just starting to warm things up here. And one more to each 
side. All right, so I'm gonna flex my left foot here and start to take this out into a clamshell, feeling for where your pelvis wants to change. So keeping that equal weight through both sides of the pelvis. If you wanna keep your hands on your hip bones, just for a little extra accountability. Now, just as a reminder, what we don't want is to tilt the pelvis as we clamshell open because that wouldn't be allowing the range of motion to come through the hip socket. So really just finding where is the extent of my range through that hip. One more to this side. And resting that foot back down, let's take that to the other side, just again, feeling for where that range of motion is through the hip and allowing your pelvis to stay equally weighted through both sides. Range of motion might be a little bit different from side to side, which is pretty normal. It's normal to have that slight imbalance from side to side, or maybe it's a little bit more than slight, and that's okay too. Two more clamshells on this side, allowing that leg bone just to rest really heavy in the back of the hip socket. Resting that foot down. And we're gonna stretch that left leg out long, hugging your right leg in towards you, just reaching through the heel of the left leg for a little stretch here, taking that leg across the body for a little stretch and twist. And returning back to the mat before you switch sides. Now, if ever you want to hang out in a stretch or a movement a little bit longer and then we do in the video, feel free to pause and take this at your own pace. Taking that across the body. And back to center. All right. So we're going to bring one at a time those legs into shelf. Now, if you are not able or feel comfortable bringing both legs into a shelf, you can always just bring one leg into a shelf, resting the other one down on the mat. So I'm gonna have both legs in a tabletop. I'm just gonna tilt that screen up a smidge so you can see a little bit better. Okay. And we're gonna take an alternating heel tap. So just bringing that heel down towards the mat, allowing the bottom of your rib cage and spine to stay heavy on the mat. Bringing it back up. Shoulders resting heavy. Now, if you've got one leg on the mat, you can just take about four on one side and then switch and four on the other. One more set here if you've got both legs in shelf. And resting those legs back down. Taking another pelvic curl here, feeling how that range of motion and flexibility has changed a little bit as we've been moving. And we're going to bring both arms up, fingertips towards the ceiling. And we're going to take an alternating puppet arm here. So scooping from the back of your body, one shoulder blade out and up. So those fingertips come up towards the ceiling and resting back down, taking that to the other side, letting your sternum stay heavy as you just take that alternate reach, really allowing that movement to start at the back of the shoulder blade. Take it a couple more times here, just allowing this space to loosen up. And on the next one, we're going to take that scoop up on the right side, scooping up, fingertips up towards the ceiling, and then we're going to rotate that upper body, head comes along with, 
letting the pelvis stay equally weighted on both sides. And reach those fingertips away and set yourself back down. Same thing to the other side, starting your scoop up, allowing that scoop to just start your rotation. Again, leaving that pelvis equally weighted as you reach those fingertips away, reaching from the back of the body and back down on the mat. One more time to each side here. Finding your scoop up and rotating. Resting back down and last time. So leaving your arms where they are, we're just going to begin to open the arms now out into a T, keeping your arms straight, chest expanding, keeping the shoulders heavy on the mat, so no rounding those shoulders forward. And back up, arms heavy in the shoulders. And we'll take that again, just opening arms out into a T. Deep breath at the bottom, heavy through the shoulders on the way up. And one more time. Now, last thing for the arms here, we're gonna slide one arm overhead as the other arm comes down to the mat. Keeping the shoulders heavy, we're gonna reach away in both directions through the back of the armpit. Little reach and breathe, and then heavy through those shoulders as you switch sides. Finding your reach and breathe. One more time to each side. leaving your arms in the air where they are. Let's bring them into kind of a narrow V here, just enough to feel that heaviness of the arm bone in the shoulder. And now once again, we're gonna bring our legs into shelf. Feeling for if this feels accessible to you. So if it doesn't feel accessible as we take this next kind of spine twist or knee sway, you can keep your uh, legs and feet kind of where they are and find the sway that we took in the beginning. So I'm gonna model the legs in shelf. So let's one at a time, keeping that pelvis stable, legs in shelf, we're gonna start that twist. So keeping the upper body stable and feeling for where your range is. You'll know where your range is because your shoulders will start to wanna pick up off the mat. And so we're gonna take this a couple times, just letting that low belly start to wake up and begin to feel active and engaged here. And remembering to breathe. One more time to each side. And pausing here in your shelf, if you need to take a break, feel free. We're gonna bring the arms back to center and we're gonna come back to that alternating heel tap. So we're gonna bring one heel down towards the mat as both arms float overhead. And everything's gonna come back together at the same time here. And then we'll take that to the other side. Now you can easily take this with one foot resting on the mat. So find the version that works best for you. Remembering to breathe, keeping that bottom of the rib cage heavy on the mat. One more set. And resting everything back down. So let's come back to that pelvic curl here, feeling into how that feels.
And then on the next one, we're gonna take that curl up into a bridge. So let's find the height of our curl. And then as if your pubic bone is on a little elevator, we're just gonna continue that curl up into a bridge, being mindful not to squeeze those butt cheeks too much because that can add pressure to the low back. And then just from the sternum, from that upper body, melting the spine all the way back down. Pelvic curl is the last thing to unwind. And we'll take that again, just finding your curl. And melting back down. Let's take that again, finding the height of your curl and taking that to the height of the bridge that feels accessible to you. Now on the next one, we're gonna hold that bridge at the top and whatever uh, height of bridge is doable. Mindful not to squeeze those butt cheeks. We're gonna bring the arms up, plugging them into the shoulder sockets and we're gonna slide one arm overhead, one arm coming down just like we did when we were warming up. And two more times to each side. Last time to each side. Leaving the arms up, fingertips up towards the ceiling as you just gently melt that spine back down onto the mat. Arms can rest down as well. And we're gonna take that bridge one more time. Again, pausing at the top of your bridge. Taking it up. And now while you're here, I want you to feel like those back pants pockets are traveling through your body to meet your front pants pockets. So just giving yourself a little lift there. And then we're gonna widen those sit bones as we dip them down towards the mat and bring them right back up, finding that pocket through to the front pocket. Dipping down, widening through the sit bones as you do, and back up. We're gonna take that two more times. Last one. Holding at the top, we're gonna to take four to the left, widening that sit bone, bringing it back up. And then four to the right. Taking another pelvic curl. Again, just seeing how that space is feeling. And then go ahead and stretch those legs out long, arms out long. Let's just take a nice wake up stretch here before we continue, maybe wiggling out the hips a little bit. Whatever kind of feels natural to you. All right, so once again, we're gonna bring one at a time those legs into shelf. Arms are gonna come up, float behind to cradle the back of your head, and we're gonna add in a couple chest lifts here, just leaving the legs in shelf. So starting to just lift up from the sternum, the head will be along for the ride, no need to reach through from the neck. Hold for a breath and rest back down. We're gonna take that four more times.
Last two. Bringing yourself up into a chest lift, we're going to hold here. Arms are going to come around to the sides. We're just going to gently flutter the hands, little Pilates hundred. As you breathe, letting that sternum sink, tucking that chin, and breathing. Arms come back around, cradle the head, and rest everything back down. Take a moment, take a little breath here. Find that pelvic curl. We're gonna do one last exercise for the abdominals. One at a time, we're gonna bring those legs into a shelf. Now you have the option, of course, always to keep one leg resting on the mat. And so what that'll look like if you leave one leg resting on the mat is you'll come into a chest lift. You're gonna straighten one leg out. We're gonna lift and lower back down. So that is what it'll look like with one leg resting. We're gonna bring one at a time legs into shelf, finding that chest lift. And leaving one leg into shelf, we're gonna straighten one leg out, lower, and lift back up. One more to this side. Bringing it back into a shelf, other side. Two more. Back into your shelf, rest everything back down. Find that pelvic curl once again, and we're gonna go ahead and turn over onto the stomach. Okay. So, while you're here, taking a moment, you can let your head rest on your hands. And allowing your pelvis just to feel heavy into the mat here. Feeling that sink, allowing everything just to relax into the mat as you breathe. Now, we're going to come up into a little swan here. Just letting the shoulders stay down and away from the ears as you lift up from the sternum, lengthening through the crown of the head, but not lifting through the head, and resting back down. Taking that again. And down. Three more times. resting back down. You can allow your hands to shuffle down. Um, now they're resting. Instead of resting beneath your forehead, they'll rest kind of um, right below your chin. And so we're going to take that swan again, lifting up. And if it feels accessible to you, to press up into a higher swan, letting those abdominals stretch and hold you so you're not just hinging at the back. And resting everything back down. And just finding the height that feels doable for you. Lifting, keeping those shoulders down. Lengthening as those abdominals help support you. One more. Resting back down, 
reaching the arms overhead as if you're kind of a superhero flying over the city. And we're going to lift all four limbs up off the mat, allowing the head to lift slightly as well so it stays in line with the spine. We're just going to gently tuck that chin, lifting all four limbs up as you breathe, making sure not to crunch the torso on one side. Two more deep breaths here. Drop those shoulders down away from the ears. And rest back down. Let's take that two more times. Lifting all four limbs as you breathe and lengthen. Resting back down. Last one. And resting back down. From here, let's go ahead and press up and back into a child's pose. So just letting yourself sit back towards your heels in whatever way is accessible for you as you just gently reach forward and stretch through those fingertips. And then you can bring that Right arm further to the right of the mat, left arm or left hand on top of right, finding that stretch through the left side of the torso. And take that to the other side. All right. So go ahead and grab your block. You can either sit down on the mat. I'm gonna change the orientation of our screen here. So you can either sit on the block here if your hamstrings are feeling a little tight, or you can kind of just sit on the mat holding the block at your sternum. Okay, so feet are mat distance apart. You can either sit like this or Especially if your legs are a little long, this can be helpful. Okay, so sitting on the block. Now, while you're sitting up, it can be a little harder to find your posture. So just imagining that mat beneath you or behind you as you're sitting up. Feel your connection points of your shoulders into the mat, your sternum into the mat, as well as the back of your skull into the mat, just to allow your posture to find its proper form so you can strengthen the posture that you want. All right, so we're gonna bring our hands into a prayer position, thumbs right in front of the sternum. You can always hold onto your yoga block if that's helpful. Holding onto your posture, we're just gonna rotate that upper body. Once you reach the end of the range, you're gonna take a deep breath, and on your exhale, Find a little extra twist, bringing yourself back to center, making sure your thumbs don't move before your sternum. Finding that twist in the other direction. Find that inhale, exhale, find a little extra rotation. One more time to each side. Go in at your own pace, so once again, we're taking this a little bit faster. We are going faster than we've done in our smaller videos, but just allow yourself to find the pace that feels good. You can always pause this to take your time. One more time in the other direction. And back to center. We're gonna bring the arms out in front, still feeling as though you're up against that imaginary wall behind you. We're gonna to start to peel away from that wall like we did in the very beginning during our roll down. Just articulating forward away from that wall as your fingertips reach towards your feet. Now, they may not touch, that's totally fine. While you find your extended position here, we're gonna just flex the feet 
reach through those heels and we're going to stack all the way back up. Let those feet relax. We're going to take that again. So find your posture against the imaginary wall. Begin to peel away from that wall, lengthening forward. Find that reach, flexing the feet, reaching through the heels and stacking all the way back up. One more, let those feet relax, finding your posture and peeling away. And flexing, reaching through those heels, lengthening the underside of the leg as you stack all the way back up. Resting those feet, resting the arms for a moment. We're going to put together those two movements, so the rotation and the reaching forward into our Pilates saw movement. And so what that's going to look like is we're going to first find the posture that we're strengthening, right? We're going to rotate. Our right arm is going to come behind as left arm reaches for the right foot. Reaching away in both directions as you lengthen forward. You can flex the feet if you'd like, or you can just leave them relaxed. And back to center, taking that to the other side, finding your rotation, and reach. Reaching through the fingertips in both directions as you reach that torso forward, lengthening through the crown of the head. And again to the other side. Last time. All the way back to center here. Okay, so let's see how we're doing on time. Pretty good. All right, so we're going to come to a kneeling position on the mat here. I'm just going to change my screen so you can see. All right. So kind of a proposal position here on our knees and I want you to feel into whether you need a little extra padding under your knees for some extra support. One foot is going to come out into this kind of lunge or proposal position. Hips facing squarely the wall in front of you. And so what we're going to do is I want you to feel like you're leading with the hip flexors here. So just gently finding length through that quad and hip flexor as you reach forward into a little lunge, feeling into the range that's doable for you and taking it back. Now, important to keep this knee slightly behind the toes so we don't want it to go too far over. So just being mindful of that as you take it forward and back. One more. And now on this next one, we're going to lift that left arm. As we lunge forward, I want you to reach up through the back of that armpit, lengthening that whole side of the torso and taking it back. Let's switch sides. So same thing here, set yourself up so your hips are squarely facing the wall in front of you. And we'll take those initial lunges. Again, leading through that hip flexor, lengthening that quad, feeling that really nice stretch that can be so nice, especially after a lot of sitting down. Last one here, we're going to lift that arm up and find that reach through the back of the armpit. And back down. All right, so we're going to come on to our side now and switching that camera up. Okay, so coming onto your side, your head is going to be laying on the block that you have. 
finding your posture. So lining yourself up with this, the edge of the mat, just to feel for, is my head forward? Am I curling up as if I'm going to sleep? And so finding your posture, hit stacked shoulders, stacked, and we're gonna start with five initial clamshells here. Again, finding your range, it can be helpful to have a hand on the hip bones so you don't feel your pelvis wobbling through this movement. Last one. So I'm gonna scoot up just a little bit so you can better see my lower body. We're gonna lift ankles and shins up off the mat and take five more clamshells here. Resting back down. Let's lift that top leg up to the height of the hip. We're gonna lift from there and lower back down for five. Careful not to crunch this side of the torso as you're lifting. We want that lift just to come from the hip down. Last one. Leaving your height, your hip at, or your leg at the height of the hip. Let's find a slight external rotation. So as if you're clamshelling on that side just a little bit. And we're going to lift from there, lower back down for five. bringing yourself back to your neutral rotation. We're going to take little circles of the leg through the hip socket. Five in one direction, five in the other. Only bringing that circle out as big as you can keep your pelvis stable. And reverse. So we don't want a whole lot of wobbling. We want just that stability. And rest back down. We're going to straighten that leg out one, once again at the height of the hip, reaching through your heel. We're going to walk the leg forward and take it back. And last one, finishing that set of five. All right, so we're moving the block. You're gonna bring your elbow directly beneath your shoulder here. And I'm just gonna, once again, tilt that screen up so you can better see. Okay, so elbow directly beneath the shoulder. Other arm up, fingertips towards the ceiling. And we're just going to lift that pelvis and torso up. Set it back down. Finding your lift as if someone's just pulling you up by the fingertips. Resting back down. Holding on the next one. Holding it up. We're just going to bring those fingertips over behind as you curve into kind of a little rainbow. And then back up. Finding that curve. And back up. Once again. And back up, resting back down. One more thing to this side, we're gonna find the arm fingertips up towards the ceiling once again, lifting up. We're gonna rotate, take that arm through underneath and back up two more times. And resting back down. Let's take that same thing over to the other side. All right, so once again, lining yourself up with the mat behind you. Feeling for that posture that you want to strengthen versus maybe that head forward posture. All right, so shoulders stacked, hips stacked. We're going to start with those five initial clamshells. Again, letting this side be its own experience because your range of motion might be smaller, it might be bigger. So just honoring what this side has and taking your time. 
Last one. Resting down, lifting up ankles and shins for five more. Resting back down, lifting that leg up to the height of the hip. Let's lift and lower back down. Lift and lower. Careful not to crunch that side of the torso in order to lift. Taking it five. And then resting at the height of the hip, let's find that little external rotation. So baby clamshell here. And we'll lift that up, lower it down for five. And then back to your neutral rotation. And we're gonna take those little hip circles. Five in one direction, five in the other, only creating a circle at the extent that you can keep your pelvis stable. And reverse. And resting back down. Going to straighten that leg out. We're going to walk it forward and walk it back. I'm bumping into something here, so I'm just going to scoot up a smidge. Walking it forward and back. And two more. And resting back down. All right, so you can remove that block coming up onto your shoulder, or excuse me, onto your elbow, elbow directly beneath your shoulder. So you kind of want to have that nice stability feeling there. Other arm up, fingertips up towards the ceiling, and we're just going to find that lift and then lower. Lift and lower. One more. On the next one, we'll lift, find that rainbow, and one more. Resting back down. And on the next one, we'll pass that arm underneath and through, lifting up, rotating. Two more. Resting back down. All right. So let's take a little standing break here. Bringing your TheraBand with you. All right. So, TheraBand is going to be about a shoulder distance apart, or your hands on the band will be. I'm going to tilt my screen down a bit. See my lovely YMCA 175 t-shirt. All right. So, feet parallel here. Shoulders down and away from your ears. Take a moment to find that posture. So, that posture of you against that imaginary wall. We don't want to strengthen a slumped posture. We want to find that nice alignment. And we're just going to open that band and close it here, keeping those shoulders down and away from the ears. Remembering to breathe. Keeping that neck soft. So if you start to feel yourself gripping through the neck, Perhaps don't take the band out as far. So on the next one, we're going to open, lift up, keeping those shoulders down. So we don't want the shoulders to come with us. Keep those shoulders down as you straighten out the arms, bringing the band down, closing it up. So I'll take a little step back here. Finding that opening and up, 
shoulders down as if they're gliding down the back at the same time your arms are coming up and back down closing that band two more times And resting. All right, so we're gonna bring that band around behind. You can wrap it around your hands here if that feels comfortable. Step back so you can see. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just bringing those fists down towards the floor as if we're gonna punch the floor. Keeping the shoulders down, we're gonna open out against the band, reach back through the triceps, back down. Close the band. Punching the floor, bringing the arms apart, reaching back through the triceps. And again. Three more. Now on this third one, we're going to hold that out. Pulse back five times through the triceps. Hold that fifth one here, punch the floor, reach back through those triceps, and we're going to slowly rotate that head in one direction, take a deep breath, let the shoulders drop, <sighs> rotate the other direction, deep breath, shoulders drop, head back to center, pulse back five more times through those triceps. And resting back down. You can let that TheraBand drop here. Rest it down wherever is comfortable. We're going to head back over towards the mat. We're going to start to cool down a little bit here. So let's come on to all fours. Wrists directly beneath the shoulders, knees directly beneath the hips. We're gonna take a little cat-cow here. So we're gonna start by taking a pelvic curl, allowing that movement to travel up the spine into a rounded back cat pose here. And then again, starting with that pelvis, we're gonna take that arching the back a little bit as we kind of take this little cow pose, keeping the shoulders down. And again, starting with the pelvis, let that movement articulate up the spine into your cat pose. And again. Last time in each direction here. Come to a neutral spine little baby pelvic curl here and allow that to carry you back into a child's pose and just reaching forward take a breath and then you can go ahead and lie down on the mat we're going to take a figure four stretch just at your own pace taking your time one ankle over the opposite knee bringing that in towards you. And if it feels supportive, just to rock that from side to side, or you can just keep it still, whatever feels good for your body today. And switch. ready you can go ahead and let those feet rest and we're going to come up to a seated position just cross-legged on the mat here a little mermaid stretch we're going to bring that left hand to the mat right arm out finding a reach through that back of the armpit we're going to reach up and take it over 
into a little side bend and taking that to the other side careful not to crunch on that other side we want to keep a nice length through the spine so i'm going to tilt my screen up so you can see a little bit better but continuing with that little side bend, keeping that head in line with the spine. We don't want the head to come forward. And other side. Lengthening both sides of the torso. And we're going to add in a little rotation. So left hand comes to the mat, right arm up, add in that twist. Reach that arm forward to that side. And other side. One more time to each side here. And you can come up to a standing position. We're gonna take one more little stretch before we close up here. All right, so bringing one arm out to the side, wherever you feel like the stretch is the greatest. So feel around for where you really feel that stretch down the arm. Lengthening through the fingers. We're gonna bring your ear towards that side. Let the shoulder drop ear towards the opposite side. Deep breath here as you feel into that stretch and we're just gonna take little circles of the head, keeping your ear towards that side. And reverse. Head back to center, let your arm rest. Same thing to the other side. Taking a moment to find the position where that stretches the greatest down the arm. Reaching through the fingertips, let's bring your ear towards that side. And then ear towards the opposite side. Deep breath. Make sure your head is not forward. Make sure it's on top of the spine. And we'll take those little head circles. And reverse. Resting back down with the head back to center. All right, giving a little wiggle. So we're gonna finish the same way that we started. We're going to bring the feet parallel if they're not already, and we're gonna take that roll down. Once again, just feeling for how the spine is moving and how that might it be um, have changed since the beginning of class. So let's just tuck the chin and articulate down. Stopping, of course, wherever you feel tension or tightness, just letting it be easy and gentle. If you make it to the bottom, you can hang out here for a moment. If it feels good to just bend one knee, digging the opposite heel into the floor and switching, just taking what feels good. When you feel ready, you can stack all the way back up. All right. So, Definitely take a minute to thank yourself for completing this video. Um, that was a pretty challenging class for you, then especially give yourself some props. Make sure to stretch if you need to stretch a little bit more. There are so many great and supportive stretch videos available in this series on the YS YouTube channel. So take what you need, take your time, and I'll see you back here next time on the YS YouTube channel. Take care.